I hope you're having a good day. I kind of missed you. Oh, I feel like we're friends by now. So um, I'm really happy to present Dr. Mehdi in his uh, great, great and kind of difficult <laughs> presentation for the day. Uh, but before we do that, we have three ground rules. I feel that you guys can recite them with me at this point. Number one, keep your questions at Q&A and Facebook Live. Keep them relevant to the uh, technical content of the lecture only, please, so it's easier for me to filter them. Uh, number three, we will answer as many questions as we can. The questions we select, uh, by any means, does not mean that we ignore your question. It just means that these are the questions we find most relevant to most people who are attending. So I apologize in advance if I didn't answer your question. It's just there are so many of you. Um, Last but not least, please keep the chat area professional. Any irrelevant comments won't, won't be well received. And with that said, let's start with introducing Dr. Mehdi. Dr. Mehdi was a senior global technical advisor retired from Halliburton after 32 years of service. He has more than 40 years of experience in oil and gas industry and authored more than 100 publications with 15 U.S. and inter international patents. He was previously a professor of petroleum engineering at the University of, of Wyoming and worked at OSCO Computer Center in Abdan, Iran, and is a member of SPE and Paolo. His area of expertise are reservoir characterization of fluids, as well as testing, production operation, and optimization, gas left evaluation, asphalt scene remediation, pipeline, and truck setting, uh, secondary recovery studies, such as water, gas, and polymer flooding, as well as combined WAG, completion, and stimulation optimization. Uh, Dr. Mehdi has been... Um, a consultant for six and a half years with Halliburton in Algeria, Saudi Aramco, and KOC. Dr. Mehdi, over to you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Ms. Nihal. And uh, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. And thanks for attending uh, this webinar. And uh, I hope to, that you can enjoy it. You can learn something from this one. And uh, I made a presentation last week on well testing and several people good number of people, they contacted him through my email and uh, a lot of uh, uh, interest on my LinkedIn. But uh, I'm an older guy, so I would rather uh, with email because that's, that's easier for me. It's in front of me. All right, thank you very much. So this is gonna be the decline curve analysis and production forecasting, and uh, which is part of reservoir management. And I also want to appreciate uh, Dr. Ahmed for sponsoring this kind of uh, work, uh, which is gonna be very helpful to people that are, do not have the regular training right now because of the disease, but uh, there's some good news today that uh, they have come up with some uh, resolution, some uh, medicine for that one, which is basically anti-inflammatory drugs. And uh, I'm gonna skip this one. Uh, this is part of reservoir, the clan curve uh, analysis part of reservoir management. And uh, so, uh, so it requires reserve estimation, which is we do it by material balance. We do it, we find out that what is the dry mechanism that is making the oil to flow from the reservoir to the well bore. And then we look at the decline curve. The decline curve is not only production, it's also pressure. Why they are declining is very important. And sometimes they, they move up instead of declining. They increase, so we need to find out why pressure increases and why uh, ready rate. If we cannot answer those, we cannot do any reservoir management. We have to understand it. And then we need to find out that diagnosis. The diagnosis is why, why it happened. If I did something in the next well and it affected it, so that's a good news because they are communicating. So I need to find out all of those. And then for any well, you need to have a history. Everything that, that, the, that was done on that well, on the offset wells, you need to put them all together to understand uh, that that well and that reservoir and then you can come up with a, with a proper diagnostic and a proper technique to increase production. The whole thing is increasing production without damaging the reservoir, all right? And sometimes you do reservoir simulation and uh, we do some economic uh, analysis. Reservoir economics is also important that, okay, there is a situation, there's a problem here, production has gone down and should I go ahead and do acidizing or should I go ahead and fracturing it? There's a big difference in cost. Sometimes, uh, 
and none of those is the problem. So the, the problem could be because you have lost pressure. You, you need to do gas lifting, secondary recovery, water injection, that kind of work. So you need to find out the, the problem, then solve the problem. So for the reservoir management and reserve estimate, there the are different techniques. Volumetric method is uh, you do that the earliest stage of a reservoir development, and then you need to know the geology, geophysic, rock and fluid properties, everything. The, the, you need to know the, the petrophysical property. You need to do evaluation based on all of those. You need to find out the offset wells, and then uh, you, you can come up with a recovery factor based on initial information. and. Uh, uh, to, to come up with a volumetric method of uh, evaluating the reserves. And if you have multiple wells, then there are other techniques that roughly you take the halfway between depending on the production rate. If one well is producing a thousand barrel per day, the other one producing 500 barrel per day. So the one which is producing 1000 barrel per day is draining more, twice as much more. So there are some initial techniques that you can uh, draw with line to, uh, with some kind of, uh, on, on a, on a map of the field, we can draw the line, okay, what area is this well draining, what area the other well is draining. The other technique is a material balance method. Uh, to do material balance method is material balance, which means how much fluid is coming in, how much fluid is going out. At the beginning, I cannot do that because I do not have much fluid coming out. So now you did at the middle to later stages, you do uh, roughly when 20% uh, of reservoir production, and the pressure has dropped roughly 10%, you can do that one. Again, you need all of the geology, rock mechanics. And uh, it looks like the recording has stopped. Is that correct? Go, go, go ahead, sir. No okay. So then, uh, then you, you can come up with a recovery factor. And then uh, now this one, the material balance technique is a time dependent that uh, uh, we talked some of it uh, last last week when I talked pressure transitions. You know, I will I will talk about them this time as well. Now, uh, so another technique is the decline curve analysis, which is also late to middle stages. And uh, sometimes when usually people do not care about it, once pressure start dropping, they do the decline curve and find out what what went wrong, and based based on the production data, and from that one, they can calculate the curve factor and then the, the time of the, the, the production time or life of the well, all of those, we can get it from the production decline curve and how much is the reserve, you can get it and how much more recovery reserves you have. So all of those are part of the decline curve. The same thing can be applied to the reservoir simulation that you can simulate here. And the reservoir simulation, you can basically do that anytime uh, that you have the money and resources to do that one. And, uh, uh, a lot of problem is if you do not know uh, the entire geology and petrophysics of the, the well, you assume everything is homogeneous. That means if I have a permit of 100 million dollars here, I have a permit of 100 million dollars here, 100 million dollars there. And so it could be totally wrong because the shape of the reservoir, as I showed last time, is totally different than a simple assumption. So. Uh, a lot of places that I have seen, uh, the reservoir simulation does not provide an accurate uh, uh, technique on how much oil you have and how much oil you can be produced. You can, I mean, in, in Kuwait, they were spending a lot of money on that one, but the guy said the only thing that is reliable is uh, the recovery factor and how much you have produced, which is past, not future. Now, a reservoir study involves uh, with periodical use of a portable GOR which they use it in, in Algeria and they do a very good job at it. Or sometimes they have a standalone separator at the gathering center, that's in Kuwait. Kuwait, they have a gathering center which is separated uh, from the rest of the separators. This is just for testing. So once they wanna test a well, they reroute the, the line that comes from the well, the pipeline that comes from the well to that separator, then they, they test it, they, they found out all the information. They, they test the oil production, water production, gas production, and then the gas flow ratio, choke size evaluation, they, they do all of that. And uh, the other thing that they do, is they, they do static and dynamic well head and uh, downhole pressure measurement conducted during a pressure buildup analysis, which is uh, periodically they, they go to the well, si well side and read the, the well head pressure. The, uh, as I mentioned again last time, the choke size is very important. You, you need to know pressure before the choke and after ch ch the choke. The pressure through the choke has to be uh, at a sonic velocity 
are the if the if the uh, opposite the uh, upstream is let's say very close to downstream then the flow downstream is going to affect the reservoir so you need to have those ratios taken care of you need to have a two to one ratio roughly it's 1.8 something but as a sim simply we say two to one ratio so a lot of things are, are involved and then Static and dynamic is also another thing. You can just send the uh, gauge down, and then as you're going down, it's dynamic because the well is flowing. If you shut the well in, and then usually when you do a pressure buildup at the end of that, you can pull the, the, the gauge up, read the, do the pressure buildup analysis, and find out the, the gradients, the fluid type that you have uh, in the well bore. These are also important for if you want to do a nodal analysis, which is inflow and outflow, you need to know. Uh, in, in your well bore, what are the, the pressure uh, uh, losses due to friction? And that, that is from a dynamic uh, uh, pressure data that you can get. And then uh, uh, you can also calculate, uh, calculate the reservoir pressure. Why the reservoir pressure is very important because if I find the reservoir pressure uh, a year ago was 3000 and the reservoir pressure right now is 2800, so I know the whole reservoir has dropped by 200. If it is uh, 2,500, then the whole reservoir is dropped by 500, which is significant. So I need to find out. A downhole pressure is not, is not a measure of average reservoir pressure. The downhole pressure is a measure of how fast you're producing. If the flow rate is high, the downhole pressure is going to be low. So from, I mean, from the pressure buildup analysis and then the, some volumetric uh, calculation, you can come up with a a uh, very good uh, estimate of the average of pressure. The average of pressure is important, not the, not the pressure buildup and not, and not the, the bottom hole flowing pressure or the bottom hole static pressure. They are all different from each other. So by, by the clone curve analysis, you, you can get the production rate and the average of pressure of a well uh, uh, after I guess, told you, an extended period of time. If I shut the well in for a long period of time and uh, uh, and the well is not unconventional because unconventional takes a longer time. So that reservoir pressure uh, at that well, now it is an average reservoir pressure. But there are, as I told, there are some technique which is not a part of this class, it's part of the advanced uh, reservoir engineering that we go to that, those kind of calculation. And then once you get the decline of the portion of the data, you can extend it to get the life of that one, production of the well, and all, all the things that uh, I'm gonna show to you uh, later on. And all of these are part of the production optimization process, okay? Because I need to know, understand my reservoir and, and produce that well at the optimum value. And all of these, as I mentioned earlier, is part of reservoir management. So now this will help, all of these study will help me to evaluate and find out, diagnose any problem that we, this well has. This will help me to do acidizing, hydraulic fracturing, reperforating. We have had cases in so many countries that uh, they, they had to do reperforating because the perforations are clogged. I had cases that I, we tested it, we analyzed it offshore well, because those are expensive. And while they were still offshore, we told them that you need to acidize. And then when they acidize in one well in Gulf of Mexico, we tripled the production rate. I mean, it could have recommended to do hydraulic fracturing, which is wrong. Huh? because they, pro pro they both pro provide the same amount of production increase if the problem is uh, damaged. But uh, hydraulic fracturing is a lot more expensive and a lot more costly, it mo involves a lot of equipment. Okay, I mean, we have had cases in Egypt that we had to go ahead and repair for the other zones. We have had cases in Saudi, in, in Kuwait, uh, I mean, that, uh, uh, you, you got a lot of water coming from one zone and then we had to uh, basically plug those and perforate up above it. In, in some locations, once you do the study, complete the study, you find that, well, horizontal well is going to be better. In Kuwait, that there's a, a tight formation, the very high pressure, very high pressure. And then it's all actually over pressure. And then uh, they're drilling vertical wells and they did a five spot water injection, which is totally wrong. You do not do a, a water flooding in a zone, in a reservoir that is over pressure. They, they, they did, it's a carbon that the reservoir. They, but a carbon reservoir in, uh, in uh, what is that? Uh, Abu Dhabi, 
it was perfectly fine because now that they had let it drain, pressure dropped, and then they did water flooding. But the solution for uh, uh, Kuwait would be drill horizontal well. The solution for uh, for the same reservoir, the solution for Abu Dhabi was to uh, do water flooding. So you can see the same formation in one, one country, you have to do a different analysis because it's, it's not the simple way that, okay, horizontal is gonna work all the time. You need to know other factors. And then you need to do pressure maintenance, which is water, gas, and polymer flooding, and uh, find out the, the, if there's a breakthrough of the fluid with, uh, and the, that you're injecting. <clears throat> and how, how much you're producing and injecting. Can I just uh, convert it to a water flood? There's a lot of a study that involves. So all of this is part of this uh, reservoir study that you do. So information is gold. You, you gather all the information, then you can decide on that one. And then the choke manipulation is another factor. And some, some wells you need to do artificial lifting, gas lifting or mechanical lifting, just look like it, lifting it basically. And so the, all of these to, to prevent the rapid decline of the fluoride that you have. Now you also need to do the economical study for different work of uh, overall. So let's say you have two, three different solutions. You need to find out how much it costs and how much that will bring more. I mean, years, years back, you know, we were one of the pioneers uh, uh, in the early eighties that we did horizontal with multiple fractures. So now this is horizontal, but I wanna frack it like this one, huh? How many of these do I need? So we did a study of the optimum number of the, this uh, transfer fractures that you need. So, um, so in order to forecast production rate by decline curve, uh, you, you need to know some, some equations, some factors. So a plot of pressure versus log of time is a straight line after the end of the pressure transient period. So once the pressure transient period is gone, then we call it the semi uh, steady or pseudo steady state flow starts. We covered that one last week. So these are equations are from last week. So basically, a pseudo steady state definition is partial P partial T is constant. And then I drive this equation, it's a very important equation. The partial pressure at the well bore, uh, partial T is equal to this constant, and Q is here. This is the total uh, production volume, pore volume. And then this is an equation for pseudo steady state, which is pressure here, variable. And then here is Q is the variable, but you can keep it constant. And T is a parameter. So pressure versus time. All of these equations are related. So we need to know at what time, when flow in the reservoir is gonna be pseudo steady state. And that happens at a roughly a TDA dimensionless time based on area of greater than 0.1, okay? This is for a symmetrical reservoir, look at circle well at the middle of that, or a square or a triangle well at the middle of that, a triangle well at the middle of that. And once you have any of these geometry, roughly 0.1 is uh, the start of it. So if I change the TDA to uh, the equation of that one, is this equation, which is dimensionless time. So you put the parameters here, you do not need to have exact number. You can just approximate and find out what is the TDA right now, all right? And then the uh, typical relationship uh, between pressure and rate are for, during the pseudo steady state are shown by Vogel's empirical correlation, okay? Which is this equation. Q oil divided by maximum flow rate, which maximum flow rate happens at the downhole pressure of almost zero. One minus 0.2 pressure at the downhole pressure flowing divided by average of pressure minus if it is a new wells, you can still use PI. One minus 0.8 PWF over P average square, okay? So a, a plot of Q versus time uh, provides a similar signature and the empirical relationship that has been developed for, for probably early 1900s. So it's a, this, this was one of the early type of uh, relationship because uh, some of these equations were not fully developed, and then they were, they were plotting a cube. I mean, it's very simple, production versus time, and then see how it declines. So this is an equation that the uh, um, plot that I showed last week, and this is a plot of uh, uh, the, the bottom hole pressure versus QW production. And then you have got straight lines, and then this is bubble point, huh? This line, the, the dashed line is bubble point. 
as long as you're above bubble point, you are in a steady state uh, profile. Once you go below bubble point, then it starts to curve down. The curve down and it goes below dew point. And if it, if it is a steady state, steady state flow means you have a huge reservoir. Even if you go below bubble point, you can come back to this place. So, so if it is here, you can come back here. Okay, if I, if I reduce production. They sometimes do that, increase production at the beginning to find out uh, where it crosses uh, at the PWF of zero, we call it AOF, absolute open flow potential of the well. So if I know the absolute open flow potential of well is 5,000 barrel per day, I know that's a maximum under any condition, usually do at the beginning. But once uh, the, the well is produces for a while and it is under pseudo steady state, under pseudo steady state, then if this is the time you go below uh, the dew point, you come here, and then later on, um, two, three months later, if you want to do that, you, you cannot go to the same pressure. You go to a different pressure because in a pseudo steady state, remember this is the equation. Partial P pressure T is constant. So you're losing pressure with respect to time. Let's say you're you losing 200 PSI per year. Okay, so that, that's the situation here. You are losing pressure within these two. So initially could be this one, and six months later, yeah, two years later, this one, all right? And then this part of this equation is called the, the Vogel equation. This is a correlation, basically. We also show this uh, dimensionless pressure, which we call it MBH plus. And this is on the x-axis is dimensionless time, and this is point one. So to the left of it is transient flow, to the right of it is a pseudo steady state, which as you can see is a straight line. So it's a semi-log straight line because here is Cartesian, on the x-axis is a log. So a decline curve uh, analysis is influenced by production drive uh, uh, mechanism. So under what production drive you have. So knowing the production drive mechanism in a well is, uh, will help us to more accurately decline the, uh, the, the for future. So now this is several scenarios. I might even pass it, come back here, okay. So, on the y-axis, you got the reservoir pressure. On the x-axis, you got the recovery factor, how much you, you recover. Number one is a liquid here. I put the nomenclature here. So number one is liquid and rock expansion, okay? So if it is only expansion of that one, and it's going to drop very fast. Number two is solution gas drop. Now I have gas and as I drop pressure, more gas comes and maintains pressure. So this is better than the first one. And then you got number three, which is the gas cap expansion. Sometimes you have a gas on the top of the oil and then as you're producing the oil out, the gas expands and maintains pressure. So that's a better scenario. Number five is a gravity drainage is when you have in a, the reservoir that is uh, basically slanted, and then you have the well on the bottom. You basically have the, the, the weight the, and the hydrostatic head of the oil column in the, for, uh, in the pay zone, which is pushing down and maintains the pressure for a longer time. And then the, the purple color, number four, is your water influx. The water influx could, doesn't start at the beginning. So once you drop pressure a little bit, and then it just starts kicking in. For instance, uh, the wells in, uh, in Kuwait, they are very close to the Gulf, and then the Gulf, uh, the water from the Gulf pressure maintains the pressure. So uh, that's why some of those wells have produced for such a long time and then pressure uh, does not uh, drop significantly. In some other formations, it is between one and two. Normally it is two. And then they, they, they lose pressure a lot. Now they have to start lifting it, pressure lifting it. So, that, that's why you can see some of the cases that the reservoir pressure is enough to come to surface, for the fluid to come to surface. In some wells like one and two, you have to start pumping after a while, okay? A lot of the wells in, inland, which is inside the, um, the US, they are part of one and two. 
okay, because they, they do not have that. I mean, they could have a partial of water influx and partial of this uh, basic solution gas drive, but overall, after a while, they have to pump it. So now you look at the oil flow at beginning and then it starts to decline because now, why is it increasing? Because let's say you started one well, two wells, and, and you finally you have so many wells in the field and production reaches to the maximum. After that point, you start declining. So this is the part of the depletion and decline curve that we are talking about today. Again, if it's water flooding, it is gonna maintain it more. If it is infill and water flood, infill that means, uh, let's say you, you produce, you drill the 100 wells in this field, and then you do the study now, and you say, wow, that part of the field has not been drained. Why, how do I find that? Because once you do a, all of these pressure buildup that I told you, we'll find the average of pressure, and then you plot it on these contour maps, you can put it, okay, this is pressure uh, 4,000, pressure where there's 2,000, pressure is 2,500, pressure where there is 4,500. You can find out that this area has not been drained efficiently. So you, you plan to drill some wells in this area, okay? So that's called infill drilling. Once you do that, when production increases, and then follows the, the, the decline that you have. Normally, the decline is going to be the same as the original decline, but you give it like a kick, kick a start to, to increase it. Okay. Now, we have different types of declines that we have. Um, the, so you need, I mean, we already stated that you need to be in the pseudo steady state flow for the decline. And again, the pseudo steady state flow is the type of flow that the boundaries, the pressure has reached the boundary and then pressure is dropping. Hmm? Go to the boundary, pressure is dropping. So the most uh, uh, famous and most typical decline is called exponential decline. In this one, if I have a log of Q versus time, you find a straight line. Log of Q versus time. And then if I have a Cartesian plot of Q versus cumulative production is also linear. Okay, so these are the two signature of that one. And then hyperbolic is a declines less than uh, the exponential. It declines less. So if you plot the data, as you see here, is gonna be a little bit higher. This is exponential decline. This is gonna be a little bit higher than that. So on a log of Q versus T, as you had here, log of Q versus T, that one was linear, but this is gonna be concave up. So one of them is linear, do you see me? The other one is gonna be like this one, concave up and above the straight line. If I make a log log plot of uh, total production versus Q, uh, current production rate, is gonna be a straight line, the slope is gonna be B minus one. We're gonna talk about the B is a, a exponential factor. And harmonic is also a special case of hyperbolic decline. It declines in a special type of uh, hyperbolic decline. Now the B factor, which I'm gonna show next slide, is gonna be one. It has uh, less decline than the exponential. So exponential you find that is uh, highest among these two, but there's one which has even higher, linear decline. The linear decline is gonna drop, drop fast. Remember, remember here, remember these cases, these are, these are linear decline. Okay, the one and two are linear decline. So let's talk about the exponential uh, production decline. And um, the equation for exponential decline is this one, Q is equal to QI uh, E minus A to the power of A to the power of T. T. Now, you might find some places they call it D, some places they might call it um, C, some places they call it B, but the, 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 the same concept. So Q is equal to the initial rate, which is constant, exponential of minus AT. And if you go by that B, which we had it on in uh, this hyperbolic, uh, the B is, is zero. So if I take log of Q is gonna be this equation, and that's why we say a log of Q is gonna be, if I plot log on the y-axis, log of Q, and then Cartesian on the x-axis with time, it's gonna be a straight line, all right? That's because of this equation. And then if I solve this equation for time, time is gonna be equal to ln, natural log of Qi, divided by Q, divided by A. This is a production log, very simple. So 
I can get the production life of a well if I have, let's say, QI, I know it, and then Q is the economic limit. So let's say you start at 1,000 barrel per day, and then the economic limit is 10. So 1,000 divided by 10 by A. So A, you need to find it from the plus. So once you find A, then, which is a slope, if, it, if you plot in this equation, log of Q versus T, slope is going to be A. Okay? So now, T is going to be life of the world, but the life, let's say that QI is, as I said, 1,000 and economically is 10. So you can start from beginning. But normally, from beginning, you're not going to have decline. So let's say instead of 1,000, you're doing it two years or three years after production. Now QI is 1,000, 500. So now you start from 500 to 10 with the same A. So now that T would be the remaining life. Okay, so the remaining up could be five years. If you do it from beginning QI of 1,000 divided by 10 for that A, this could be eight years, okay? Again, these equations are not that scientific. They are not exact. These are just correlation. So these are going to give you some hint about how much more production uh, is left and what is the expected life based on this kind of production. So I can also solve for MP, which is that the total produced oil or GP total produced gas at the well, which is if I take integral of QDT over a time period, is going to give you production. All right, that's the typical math equation. So for T, for Q, if I put this equation, which is QI even, and then solve it, it's going to be a simple 365 Q1 minus Q2 divided by A. So if I, the Q is barrel per day, and A would be in the unit of so much decline per year. So that's why we do what multiply barrel per day with 365 to make it better per year so to get A in, in the unit of uh, one over a year. So these are typical plots of a set of data. Let's say I have this oil rate, flow rate, stock time, barrel versus time. You plot it, it looks like that. At the first... Uh, you can, you can pass a line through those, okay? So plot of Q versus T with the best curve fit is not needed, but I mean, if you want it. And you can also extrapolate it with the best fit, which is the same, the same data, huh? And then this is the extra, extrapolation of that. But how do you extrapolate it? The extrapolation is based on, is based on the straight line. Log of Q versus time is linear, and also NP versus Q is linear, okay? So now this is the oil flow rate, which is the same flow rate for the same data, but I'm doing it in the log. So if I make a log of that one, the, the log is going to compress. So it compresses the data, and suddenly the data is on a straight line versus time. Now I can extrapolate it here and find out that if I produce it at this rate, and it is going to be roughly about 70 months of production total from beginning. If you stop from here, uh, which is, let's say, 25, let's say 25 uh, months has passed, and 70, uh, 70 is 45 more months. You can say four, that's a lot. All of these, you can get it from the time, huh? from this equation. Or you can just do it graphically. But let's say that we have an economic limit of 10. That means that's it. That's the bottom. So now, in reality, the, the life of this well is like 46 months. And then if you start at 25, 25 to 46, that means 20, 21 more months is left, all right? So these are very simple and um, that you can do it to have the data. The best would be to take the data into Excel. Excel has this uh, plotting uh, capability. You can make it log, you can make it uh, all kinds of log of X or log of Y. You can see which one makes it a straight line and uh, to extrapolate it. Uh, yeah, that, that Excel uh, uh, plotting uh, graphics is very powerful. Now, another technique is uh, oil, oil rate versus uh, Q, which is this equation. Oil flow rate, let's say Q1 is fixed, is the time, let's say Q1 is the time that you start, and Q is the, the, the variable, and MP. So Q, this is Q1, Q2 is variable. So if I plot the, the oil rate, flow rate versus total production, that, that is also a straight line. So they have two 
two different uh, scenarios. One is uh, one is uh, Q versus time. I mean, log of Q versus time. The other one just total production and time. I have fluid is constant. So these are this is basic exponential decline. The next one is hyperbolic decline. As we said, it is going to have less decline than exponential. And this is the equation. Remember, the B we are talking about is the B. So this is the equation. If B is 0, then you get exponential. If you put B 0, then you get exponential decline. And But normally, B for hyperbolic to be a hyperbolic decline is going to be between 0 and 1. And you can just divide it by Q and you just go with the equation, Q over Q, the ratio is gonna be this number. And then, so now it's a little bit more simple equation. And then you can solve for time from this equation, you get this one, this is production life of it. NP, which is the same at, would be integral of uh, Q dt over a time period. And for Q, I'm gonna put this equation here and keep solving until I can come up with this one, this equation. So now we can see that if I take a log of MP, okay, log of lift is gonna be, this is these are all constant, constant is gonna be, there's a minus one minus B log of Q. So it's gonna be B minus one. So see that B by one. So the slope is gonna be, slope of log of mp versus log of q is going to be straight line with slope of b minus one so let's go to harmonic harmonic equation is also the same as this equation but b is one it has uh, basically uh, less decline than exponential so this is the equation simple equation and uh, if you solve for time this is going to be time Simple equation. So you now in all of these, you need to find out that D factor or B factor or something like that to, uh, the most uh, parameters that you need to find here is two factors, B and D, B and D. If you plot it like this one from MP versus this one, the slope is gonna be B. So you can find B from here. Once you have B, you can plug in this equation, that equation get D. So that techniques to do that, huh? So now MP, same as before, is an integral of Q dt. For Q, you put that equation and you come over with this uh, equation. So ln of QI over Q, and then QI and DI. D is the, the exponential uh, exponent uh, parameters, and then QI is initial in flow rate. So now let's see how we can do it. MP versus log of Q is gonna be, have a line of a slope minus one. So this is a summary of all of these equations for different cases. You can go over them. I more or less explain all of them. And for instance, here called effective decline factor, which is D. Some of these, uh, they sh I mean, I use, I use like A here, I use B. So mine is very close here, but some other people might use different uh, constant. And so A, they might call it B or D. So generally, uh, decline curve, is influenced by production drive mechanism, okay? And remember I showed it to you, uh, let's say rock, uh, rock and fluid expansion, fastest, when you have gas expansion, uh, a little bit better. When you have, uh, let's say, uh, gas cap is gonna be higher, water drop. So all of these are gonna change the drive uh, and the decline. So this is a rough, uh, uh, number for different B. If B is zero, oil uh, reservoir above bubble point. If B is 0.33, oil reservoir under solution gas drive. Remember these that we talk solution. B is 0.5 is gravity drainage, turbulent oil flow, laminar gas. So you can use it as a source of, uh, I made a mistake here. I need to put the dot over there. So this is slide number 23. Okay. So if B is 0 0.667 or 67, something like that one, like two thirds, or as a wall or pressure versus in a P is linear on the laminar flow. Higher than that, 0 0.78 is layered reservoir with no cross flow. When B is greater than one, huh? so far it was between zero and one. If it is greater than one, 
it's a hyperbolic curve fitting with B greater than one. It means that the production is influenced by transient behavior. So it's transient. And it's not yet in the pseudo steady state. So the pseudo steady state is after production for a while until you, the boundary are filled. And then remember the TDA is 0.1 or higher. So those, these are some cases. You might have heard that if you plot pressure, PI, P pressure over Z factor, compressive factor for gas versus total production is going to be a straight line. This is just like the, the different declines, like a solution uh, expansion, uh, fluid expansion, gas cap expansion. This is the same thing, but this is for gas. So now you can see that the same story here. If you have water influx, see that? This is going to be declining like this one. But normally it is going to decline. Gas is a lot easier. It's going to decline on a straight line as long as you have a volumetric, have a fixed volume. If you start dropping the pressure and then, and then you have another reservoir that suddenly it opens up. I have seen it uh, several places. I'm going to show you some example. The latest one was uh, uh, the Israelis were drilling some um, formations offshore Israel and then I, it was published. And then they, they had the, the gas reservoir uh, pressure decline and suddenly another reservoir opened up to this reservoir. So now pressure went up. So you have some of these cases. So if you have the uh, material balance equation, uh, we, we, you can say the mat, mat, this is GBGI. G is the total gas. BGI is the initial is equal to G minus GP BG, which, mean, which roughly says the initial gas is equal to the, rem the remaining, G minus GP is the remaining gas expanded into the same volume, right? which means if I have this volume of gas, initially it's high pressure. I produce some part of it, the gas volume does not change, but it is at the lower pressure. So that's why the, the pressure is uh, shown by BG, right? And this is the equation for BG, 0.0289, Z, uh, T divided by P. Okay. So if I do, if I put for BG this equation into that equation, material balance equation, then I come with this one. As you simplify, you come with here. So now P over Z, which is a variable with time and production, is equal to PI, ZI initial pressure over Z minus pi which is a fixed number zi is a fixed number divided by g a fixed number gp so now you can see the variables are p over z on the left and g to the right and that's why when you plot it here you get this line this is a straight line which is this equation at time zero when you have not produced anything your gp is zero gp again is cumulative product uh, produced gas so if this part is zero I guess you guys will see my mouse. Huh? If this part is zero, then pressure over Z is going to be PI over ZI. So that's why the, the, the left part of it is going to be PI over ZI. On the other hand, if PI over ZI is zero, if PI over ZI is zero, then, uh, uh, sorry, then, then uh, I mean, you get to the maximum here, then you, you end up with the G. GP is going to be G, which is this equation but you usually don't go all the way to zero, you, you stop at the economic limit. So if, if this is economic limit, then you can uh, get the time and how much you can produce. So all of these are to help you to get an estimate of how much you're producing. And the slope of this line is gonna be, slope here is this value, PI over zero over G. All right? So a few examples of the clone curve analysis. As, as I mentioned before, you can use Excel spreadsheet and extrapolate it different ways. You can do it log, log on Y, log on X, Cartesian, and see which one makes it uh, straight. The one that I have used mostly is a program uh, that Halliburton has DSS, a landmark uh, a program, Halliburton's landmark program, and uh, called Dynamic Surveillance System. I use it extensively a lot in Algeria. You know, this can fit different types of uh, declines. So you can just click on that one. It, it shows you, okay, exponential. You can click on this one, click on that one. 
different b values until you you're happy with your uh, basic extrapolation and then uh, In that uh, <laughs> my telephone was uh, responded to my question <laughs> okay so so the, it has automatic decline like, option. It has exponential, harmonic, manual, hyperbolic, automatic, hyperbolic, for best fit, or linear. Linear is the worst one. Huh? So this is one case that I'm showing to you here. Uh, and these are the declines that you pick up. And uh, the, the black one is your production, oil production, which is declining. And the blue line is your water production. So you have water production. And then the red one is your gas production. So you have the three production plotted together. And so let's say this is performance early on. You something happened. You had a decline here, and then you did something. Uh, I'm not going to go through what happened here, but you did something. You, you drilled more, or you uh, saw the water flowing, whatever. But now it starts declining again. And so now this is the point that you want to make a decision, right? At this point, right? so I want to make a decision. So based on this one, you can extrapolate. You can you see this one, this line here on the top of the area. So this is going to be my uh, decline curve, which is based on here. So you start from here and then extrapolate all the way to here. The area under the curve, which is the integral of QDT, is going to be how much more I am going to produce. So for anything like that one, you need to have an economic limit, okay, which is this horizontal line, all right? And then there's a time basis. If I if I put my time here, that means I this is now I want to find out how much I'm going to produce up to this point. How much is the life up to this point? If I put my line here, it's going to give me the forecast up to that that point. So you basically need to pick up a horizontal line for your economic limit and a vertical line for your time, all right? For the software to to function properly. So, I mean, it is as simple as that one. You just pick up this line, you pick up that line, you click on the um, basically gadgets that are over there for the decline, it does the decline, and then suddenly it pops up things like that one. So it says it's a harmonic decline. It says the initial rate is 29.67, and the unit that they use over there is uh, basically uh, met cube, cubic, uh, uh, per, per hour. So 29.6, very good. Initial rate 29.6, is very good. And then the decline rate is 0 0.0033. These are per year. And then the remaining uh, um, oil is 9, 93,634, up to the point. Huh? And then give you some more information that the initial rate was, remember the initial rate was 29.68, final rate was 22.3, because we are going to here 22 this is 10 22 is here all right so this is from this point to that point so once you have a and then this is the decline per year 0 0.033 <clears throat> and then this is the remaining reserves up to that point <clears throat> that, that, that doesn't mean this is ultimate is it this reserve from this point that you started to that point if you take it this point it's going to be more so having a software make life easier huh now this is a Cartesian uh, uh, rate versus time. As I showed a few times, this is a linear this, uh, decline, exponential harmonic. And then this is a per, basically a Cartesian of the rate versus Q production. So this is rate, flow rate, and then the same data. Huh? See, this is the same data. Flow rate versus cumulative production. So now you can see this is a little bit more straight. But overall, you do not have both cases you do not have enough data to extrapolate so that's why you need to have a good portion of a decline to to get the decline i mean you cannot just fit the decline curve i mean i could i could fit it with a exponential because it's a straight line remember exponential uh, q versus q production is going to be straight line so if i do an exponential which is linear on this semi-log plot it fits more or less but somebody could say, well, it's harmonic. This is a harmonic. So now you need to have more production, more production, all right? Now, remember earlier I said that you need to have a lot of information before you do any of these things. 
and uh, this is from one location they have a portable uh, separator testing they call it portable GOR and then you can see it from 1976 and 78 this is on the February and March, a month later. So sometimes they do it very often. Why do they see that in 81 they did, 78 they jumped to 81, now 82 they did it in June, they did it in November. So as I remember, they were doing it every six months, but sometimes it is needed to do more and sometimes and the, the well is doing fine, it doesn't need. So they, they need to find out what's going on. So this is a, they put the time, chalk size, they put the, the production rate for the oil, water, gas, the GOR. This is the, the, the water zero, which is good. And then uh, recovery water, doesn't matter. Now this is the water cut, which is zero. So basically the water part is all zero. High plumb pressure, what is the pipe plumb pressure at that point? And then the separator pressure that they use, and then the, the wellhead uh, pressure. So they, they record all of these here. So this is from 76 to 99. 99 to 2010 the same story as you can see there's no water here but look at the gor gor is low 100 something jumps to 1189 and that's why they need to do this things and then they probably did something here maybe they lowered the flow rate or something and uh, pressure maintenance some sort of that Again, if you look at the QGOR, again, it jumps here. So it goes to 2010, and I guess that's all I have uh, gathered here. Then they have a, the, the well test history. The well test history of this one is, again, over the years, they uh, find out uh, the choke size, and then the productivity index, the KH values, KH in the vertical direction, and uh, this is called pressure the found dynamic which is a flowing uh, uh, well uh, flowing bottom pressure i learned a little bit french from them and then the uh, pressure the the, the gizmon or something like that this is the reservoir pressure and then tubing pressure and the oil flow rate the skin calculation and what type of test they did so this is dst this is a shutting pressure pressure the found static and uh, this is pressure the fund dynamic dynamic is very easy uh, in january 1992 dynamic just put a gauge on a wire line put it down and read the numbers and come up this is dynamic but normally when you do a dynamic one it is associated with a static you, you send the gauge down and then get all the information and then you shut the welding for a build up so now that you have all of that information, there are some programs that they can plot it like that one, okay? So this is the, the program into that the DSS, uh, Halliburton's uh, Dynamic Surveillance uh, System. On the top is the flow rate, oil flow rate. The middle, the red one is here is the gas flow rate. The blue is the GOR. And then here's some pipeline pressure, stuff like that. And line pressure and pipeline pressure. So you, you need to make sure that your wellhead pressure is more than your, your line pressure. And then there are some of these uh, skin calculation or, or shutting pressure here that they plug it. But right now our focus is on the top two. So now if you, these are on Cartesian, right? Cartesian of flow rate versus time over the years. Now you can see that this starts at almost like 10, 11 uh, mid cube per hour, which is very high and it is more or less flat here, and then it is started to decline here. So this is just Cartesian. If I need to, to get some kind of exponential decline type, I need to make it plotted on a log scale. So log scale of flow rate here versus time. Now you can see that the data, which looked like a very flat here, now it is showing some decline. So this is some early decline, and then this is a late decline. The early decline is fast, the late decline is slow. So you need to find out what happened. And then these are the, the, the blue is the GOR. You need to find out what happened. You can see that at, the, at this stage, which is 88, they started doing gas lifting because the pressure was going down, so they started doing gas lifting. At uh, 95, there was another well that they converted to the water injector. 
And in that water injection, which is an offset well, it helped to uh, basically increase, uh, maintain pressure. And then at 97 day, the second recovery happened in this well. So it took a while until this well got influenced. So, so gradually you can see pressure is building up, building up, and now it is uh, declining. I mean, the flow, sorry, the flow it increases and now the flow is declining, all right? So now it is under a different decline. And then once you once you get to the straight line, by those equations I gave you, or the software can pop up all of these. So cumulative parameter reservoir, remaining uh, reserve, ultimate reserve, cumulative primary, secondary, remaining, all of these things can be calculated. Remaining secondary volume, ultimate secondary cover, cumulative secondary. So all of these can be obtained. So, so far we were talking about uh, flow rate decline, but at the same time we have pressure decline. This is pressure decline in, in one zone, which is there are a bunch of wells here. These are just the offset wells. Okay? The, the well of interest is down here and I need to find out uh, what are these wells doing. So once you plot them, you can see that they are all declining because the oldest one in this area was this guy. And then I have the, the production decline of, of this well here on the south of our well here, you can see the red one. So that's typically the, the, the type of decline. There are some wells that are declining faster, which is actually, this is our well here, and some wells are not declining as fast. Some wells like, like this one, or that one, or that one, they just put it on production. So they, they, they drill this well at uh, 2000, this, they drill this well at 2003, they drill this well at 2005, and now they're declining. You can see that they are declining fast. Why? Because they eventually, ultimately, they are going to they come come to here. Now, why? If you if look at this one, this this, this one, they start drilling it. Uh, they drill it uh, completely, put on production in middle of seventy nine, at this stage, and it is coming down. This well, they put it uh, one forty two, which is somewhere here. That well is this one. This, this one. So it had high pressure at the beginning because that area was not depleted. But since it is in the same reservoir, you can see it depletes very fast. It drops the same trend, okay? It, it does the same trend. And, and so on and so forth. When we look at this one, look at this, uh, this one. You stop producing. And then there are some events happening, which is like here that you can see some of the pressure is going there. Look at the red one. Look at the red curve. Something happening, huh? Something happened. So you are doing some kind of uh, uh, look at that. You start a water injection in uh, one of the wells, which is here. They started injecting here, okay, and uh, and then this is the water injection well. They injected that that well, so they converted to the water injector. This guy. They converted this guy to a water injector, so you do not have pressure here. And the, the here is another well, 141, which is this well. They started water injecting it here. So you can see some of this water injection increases pressure. But anyhow, what I'm saying is similar to the uh, rate decline, you have pressure decline, but pressure decline in a field is uh, and goes, if it is volumetric, goes like a trend, which is from here, drops here, Every, everything else drops to that one. And then you do some other things like water injection, gas injection, converting this one and some other things. Then you can find out uh, that uh, the trend changes. And then from, from uh, something like that one, you can find out that there are some wells that are not even, they're isolated. Even though it's in the same field, but uh, uh, pressure wise, they're not communicating. So you can get a lot of that information there. So events that influence the decline curve analysis is, uh, uh, so let's say that this is an exponential decline, that this is the same plot that we showed earlier. So this is projected recovery, but they were expecting to be this amount and, or they, they wanted to be this amount. So what they do, they need to do something here, they need to do something here to, to decline it. And normally once it declines, it declines at the same as the initial one. So what they did, they did infill drilling. So they drilled more wells, they brought it on line production and then the whole, the entire field. So let's say that they had 50 wells here 
now they added another 10, so now 60 wells are declining. So now the, the recovery, ultimate recovery from this point, it jumps to that point. It could be a simulation because now if you were not the, the acidizing, it, fracturing and stuff like that, there's some parts of the reservoir which are not contributing, now you're contributing. So part of it is uh, just part of something very similar to that one is shown here. There's a Mensa field, deep water Gulf of Mexico here. And uh, this is the initial um, trend, which is the depletion drive. And remember depletion drive, when it is like a liquid and all the, 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 the rock and fluid are expanding, no gas, initial depletion. So, and then they had done a volumetric calculation. They found out that from this field, which is here, they can produce 1300 BCF. Okay, so 1.3 trillion cubic feet they were expecting, which is, if you extrapolate it, it's gonna be way here, all right, somewhere here, all right? If, on this x-axis. On the y-axis, we're plotting P over Z versus cumulative gas, all right? It's the same as the one that I showed before, P over Z over uh, MP. But if you extrapolate the early part, look at that, it's gonna be probably, I don't know, it's gonna be somewhere here, less than 400 BCF. So 400, but they, they showed that they have 1300 BCF, all right? So that means we are not communicating with the entire field. The entire field is somehow either we have not drilled enough or some part of the field are tighter, they're not contributing. So now what happened here in the middle one, there is a section that was not contributing and once pressure dropped to a certain value, now that part is contributing, started contributing, which is that, well, that uh, section. So now external energy, which is the, the part which is coming, uh, coming here. There's some aquifer water coming in and uh, which is, uh, so the trend totally changed now. Here you can see a jump here. That jump is not part of the decline because the, the field was shut in uh, for nine, for three months, basically, right? Pressure build up. But now if you extrapolate this one, it's gonna be very close. You see that it's gonna be very close to that 1300 that they had uh, done volumetric calculation. Then something else happened here. And um, the, the aquifer influx that they had, because there's are several uh, wells here, the aquifer influx that, that you see th these are the contribution of each one of the wells. The aquifer influx uh, shut in this A2. You see that A2 here, and then it, it just drops down. B basically water is, uh, has a higher uh, um, uh, affinity to stick to the rock. So water can bypass gas. So water bypasses gas, and leave the gas behind. So now suddenly they found out that the A2 production is declining and that's why you got a very rapid decline. And um, they also, they were produced at a high rate. So some of the words you are basically dropped the pressure significantly and they, they were not contributing much more. So uh, choke sizing, the flow rate, these are all part of reservoir management, okay? So now you can see you're, you're basically killing your reservoir, all right? And then, uh, what happened here, the A4, at this point, A4 uh, went offline, which is this one. A4 went offline here, see this purple one here? Went offline, and uh, A5 went offline after that here, which is the A5 is this one. So that one went offline. So now the, the re now look at that one. The recovery trend increased. So withdrawal rates are less than aquifer influx, and then casing pressure recharging it. So now pressure is increasing. So this, you can see there's so many factors that can affect the, the production and the life of a well. But over a period of time, if things do not change, they stay on a straight line, all right? Now, again, efficient recovery of a current asset. Uh, typical recovery factor for oil is always about 35%, for gas reservoirs more. 70%, again, we're talking about uh, 1%. And this was 1% uh, more recovery is roughly equivalent to two years of war consumption. Just 1% more recovery. 70% of hydrocarbon uh, production comes from mature fields. So that means if you have mature fields, like in Algeria, mature field, Kuwait is mature field, Saudi is mature field. So 
this is the initial uh, increase in production, production versus time. And then the, the field starts to decline. That's your decline here. And then you do a secondary recovery like water gas injection that goes like that one. And then you do an IPR improved recovery, which is like a chemicals uh, and uh, steam, stuff like that. And then you do EOR, enhanced water recovery. So uh, the different thing, but anyhow, uh, the, once you implement any of these uh, techniques, you increase the production and then you decline it. What's the benefit of that? This is the same hydrocarbon. Well, the, the difference is if I keep going with this one, I get to a point, remember that economic limit? I get to a point that it doesn't, it costs me more money to produce this well. That's why you shut it in at this stage. But once I spend some money on that one, now let's say this is the, the economic limit. So for this guy, I, I change the economic limit to, uh, to 2020. If I do like a IPR, I drop, I change the recovery uh, limit to 2035. And then once you do an EOR, you can change it to 2020. So you can still produce from that well economically up to 2040. Now, when you, in, uh, again, this is very similar to this plot. Initially production increases and then you go through some declines and some events that happen here that, uh, that you do some kind of intervention, you increase the production now and then declines at a little bit different at the, starts at the higher Q, at the higher flow rate. And at the same time, you, you need to look at how much you are spending, which is the capex. So initially, as you are, you're doing drilling, you're doing more drilling, you put money to the geology, geophysics, all of these things, so you are going negative. So you're putting money and then you get to the maximum. So you start producing from these wells as you're putting more uh, wells on uh, offline. I mean, you bring them online. Now you stop producing. So now you're getting, making money, making money. And then this is your break even point. Huh? So this is your break even point and the, that you are in the money. So you are in the money, you spend some more money. Sometimes it jumps because you do some kind of uh, remedial work, acidizing, you spend some money for a gas lift uh, equipment or lifting technique, stuff like that. So cash flow. So the cash flow is also an important part of your overall decision, what to do to the well, all right? Well, that concludes my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And the uh, questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Mehdi, for the great presentation. We have lots and lots of questions. Just like. I cannot hear you. Nahal, you are mute. Yes, yes. I'm, yeah, I'm just go back. So we will take probably um, four or five questions. Uh, so uh, one question, uh, in situ uh, steady state. IPR curve shows linear relation even below bubble point pressure. Can you explain why it is still linear below the bubble point? Oh, <laughs> let's see. You're talking about, uh, okay, you're talking about this one? Uh, the number, the, the slide number is not mentioned, so I'm not okay. sure. Yeah, this it. one is uh, basic. I plot some curves here that, and, and then there's a, this one is your bubble point and above bubble point is a straight line and then be, below bubble point is gonna curve down. I draw it by hand, I draw it by hand so uh, I might have made a little bit um, mistake here, and then probably this line needs to oops. This line needs to come a little bit. The bubble point needs to come down. But usually, once you are uh, once you are in a steady state, then uh, pressure and rate are uh, related. Uh, this is the equation. This is the equation. All right. So once you are in a steady state, uh, this is a flow rate and this is pressure. So they are, and then to the right is constant. Okay, so it's a linear relationship between the two. Okay, perfect. Um, so uh, another question, someone is asking about the production drive mechanism, uh, mechanics. Uh, which drive is more favorable, water influx drive mechanism or gravity drainage or other? Well, I guess we're talking about this slide. 
Obviously, number number one and two are not desirable, but sometimes uh, you, you you're stuck with number two, so it's not your choice. It's not your choice. So you need to find out which uh, what you need to do. So for each one of them. So for if you find out that you're under number one, remember that that's is at the end it was declining and then happened here there. So you need to come up with uh, some solutions. Sometimes it is good to know ahead of time. Uh, don't wait until the, 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 the formation dies until you do something. A lot of places that I see, they don't know, okay, it's producing, it's producing. Uh, and they, they, it, they ignore it. They go to another way. But some of these things is, uh, these are part of reservoir management. And that's what I was doing in Algeria and also in, in uh, Kuwait. That, that my job was to increase production. So I, I look at the field. I look at all the upset wells. I, I mean, for one well, I, sometimes I create over 100 slides to understand it. all the geology, geophysics, petrophysics, everything, and put it on a program like that DSS, which shows me so many bubble point here, bubble point, bubble plot of this, bubble plot of that one, and to, to get to know it. So let's say your case is number one and two. What do you need to do? I need to increase production. So if I do not have, let's say, water in flux, then, then you say, okay, I need to inject. You need to inject, and sometimes injecting water at uh, and uh, or gas at beginning is actually works very good. You, you are not trying to drop the pressure, but but also there is something called voidage replacement. So let's say the reservoir pressure is three thousand, and then you have produced so much oil or or gas out of it. You need to calculate what kind of void volume, which is what kind of volume it replaces. So you need to inject at a rate that is going to maintain that pressure. You do not need, need to inject higher because if you inject higher, that fluid that you're injecting is going to bypass your oil or gas. And now your, your fluid or not, or not, your reservoir is not going to be drained properly. Okay. I have seen it over and over. In almost every water flood that I have looked at the study, the formation has been fractured because they think they inject more is better. Or they might do a study at the beginning and then they find out that, okay, if I'm injecting 1,000 barrel per day or 2,000 barrel per day water in this well, uh, the bottom of pressure is gonna be love, this number and that, that number is above, is below fracture and pressure. Fine, that's at the beginning. But as they're injecting pressure is building up as, uh, because of damage, you have so you create some incompatible between the injection water and the fluid water and then you cause some damage and that damage now before the, the formation would fracture at let's say six thousand seven thousand now the formation is going to uh, uh, fracture at that one at the low because now the damage is preventing the flow so they're injecting the same two thousand barrel per day that the downward pressure is going to be high so you need to come up with the solution you need to find out what's the problem and some places you do water flooding, water influx, and then uh, there's another factor that we need to talk about. This is only one of the uh, classes. So you need to look at the mobility, which is K over mu. Mobility is how fast the fluid uh, uh, goes in the reservoir, right? Now, uh, if you have an oil of, uh, let's say, let's say per permit is 100 milli Darcy, and then oil has a viscosity of two. So K over, K over mu is gonna be 50. Now look at the water, 100, let's say 100 milliliters, but viscosity of one. So that's mobility of water is 100, oil is 50, which means if, if I'm injecting, if I'm injecting a water from this area, since water has more mobility, it's going to go to almost twice as fast as oil, bypasses the oil. But now uh, think about Algeria oil. The Algeria oil has a viscosity of 0.2. So now... The, the mobility of that uh, oil is uh, 100 divided by 0.2 is going to be 500. So mobility of that one is 500 for the oil is uh, 100. So that water is not going to bypass oil because the oil with 100 um, um, mobility, uh, oil with 500 mobility. So oil is going to just, I mean, water is going to push. So you can, you, you need to do all of this calculation. And but basically, this is a, something very general for your information. You need to understand what's going on. If you have, for instance, in, in Kuwait, they have a natural water drive, which is probably like this one. If you look at the, the pressure, if you plot the pressure, one of the first things that I did, I plotted the pressure for a whole bunch of wells that they had. And 
I looked at the decline. Over 50, 80 years, the pressure has not deployed. It was very similar to this one. Actually, it had declined less than this one. So it was like here, which is good. So now you need to manage this water. This water is going to be your friend if you manage it right. It's going to be your enemy if you don't manage it right. What, what do I mean? If you produce it in a way, you need to find out how is that well is coming, what water is coming to the formation. Uh, if it is coming in a way that is pushing my oil out, fine. But if I am opening the choke very high, I am allowing that water to come here. Or let's say the water is on the bottom. Huh? On the bottom, oil is above that. If I, am, uh, if I open the choke on the surface, that means I create a lot of delta P. The water is going to come vertically up. Once it comes vertically up into the formation, now it has created a channel and it's called coning. It is, takes a long time to get rid of that one. Sometimes you had to shut the well in for a few months for that water to settle on. So these are, these are all part of reservoir management, all right? Okay, thank you for that very informative answer. Um, last question. Uh, in the presentation section of gas material balance for the P over Z versus GP plot, there is an economical limit in the y-axis that determines the maximum gas in place. Uh, is this economical limit something that we determine or we know from somewhere else from the calculations? Okay, that economic limit is, is a variable. It is not fixed. Different components have economic limit. Let's say that Chevron here in um, Chevron Exxon, they go to a place and they, the economic limit is probably like 40 barrels per day. So they start producing, developing that field, and it goes to 40 barrels per day because Exxon has a big overhead. It, it doesn't work for them to send engineers and, and do that one, do a lot of analysis. People go there to, uh, for only 40 barrels per day. So they what they do, they have a bunch of these ones. Once the field gets to that position, they sell it. A smaller company comes and buys it, and they're fine with 40 barrels per day, okay? So they, they, they start producing from this point on, and then they can do, these are just a small group. Huh? Uh, so the engineers, there's not much manager and board manager, director, vice president, president, they don't have that kind of uh, structure. So this is like a very flat. Managers report to the owner of the company, something like that. So now for that guy, the economy limit could be 10. So they can produce it uh, up to 10 and then they drop it. There are some places that they, for them, 10 is very good. And they can drop it all the way to one. Uh, when I was professor, I had some guys uh, from uh, some of these different small um, parts of uh, Dakota around the, that area, that the farmers, the farmers own some of these wells. And so this guy had one well, one well, and it's producing below 10 barrel per day. And they were very happy because that, that gives them, no, they don't have much overhead. They do not have to pay a lot of secretaries and that. So that, that the student, he was coming to me and over there I had the gra uh, graduate, I got my PhD. Uh, I got my PhD in, I was uh, teaching in 1982. So he comes to me to my office and then he says, I say, this is the situation. I said, okay, bring this one, bring those uh, logs, bring that one because they can get a lot of those free, uh, free of charge from the previous company. So we look at that, we said, okay, we can do this, we can do that. And then he, 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 he was doing that and bring it to me. I was happy because I was not that much experience. I was happy to help him. I was seeing uh, that the, my education was paying off. And uh, so when he graduated, got to BS, he didn't work for anybody. So there were a bunch of these farmers in that whole area that they had like one well, two well. So he became engineer for all of them, all right? And then they had a, they had a gas, uh, what do they call it, the, the pumping. So everything is pumping. So, so it doesn't come naturally to the surface. They, they had pumping. They were using some of the gas from the, the well for the pump. So it, it, it was economical for them. I hope that I answered the question. Yes, in a great way, actually. And thank you for adding the, uh, you know, uh, the um, experience from someone else. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Mehdi, for the great presentation and the answers to your questions, to the questions of the students. I'm so sorry I couldn't like answer all, everything, but I'll gather them and send them to Dr. Mehdi. If he has the time, he can actually answer them, and then we will post them for you. 
Thanks again, well, Dr. Mehdi. It's always a pleasure to have you back. And... Thank, thank you very much. As I mentioned, uh, <laughs> I, I teach courses to, to different companies, different locations. I, I can travel or I can teach online courses, like a one-week course for any location which is interested, want me to teach them. And I, have, I teach a variety of courses. Perfect. So can, can you please like uh, go back to the first slide where you share your email so people can actually connect with you? Um, and also, uh, I've told some people at the beginning of the lecture that they can message you on LinkedIn as well. Sure. So here's Dr. Mehdi's email. Please shoot him an email if you have any questions or any inquiries. Do you have any inquiries? So at the end of this um, great lecture, thank you so much, Dr. Mehdi. I'm sure everyone learned a lot from you and will continue learning. And we are looking forward to having you back. Thank you so much. I, I guess Thank it's going to be next week, next Thursday. Yes, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, all, great. All, all right, guys. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.